here to talk about Google Calendar and maybe get into a little bit of detail about how we organize some of our events or tasks and just in general how we um, stay organized and up to date with things in our marketing agency. So um, if you are watching this and you work internally with us, this will give you an idea about how we schedule um, meetings within the business. So if you have to schedule something for me or someone else on the team or yourself even, you'll learn how to do that. And if you're outside of our company watching this, this will give you some insight about how to better organize um, and distribute meetings among your team. That way you can always um, stay consistent with that. Uh, you get reminders and have this software work for you instead of the other way uh, around. It's just a really good time saver, looks very professional and it's very user-friendly to use. Um, so we use Google Calendar. Let me start sharing my screen here. So we use Google Calendar um, in our business. And the reason being, um, it's just a very efficient system to use, very user-friendly. And you don't need a paid plan to be able to use the Google Calendar system. So there are um, you know, paid calendar apps and stuff that you could use. Calendly being the most uh, popular, we have an account with them as well. Um, but I just love Google Calendar's interface. Google in general has um, a lot to offer, even without using their paid subscription, which we do have. It's mainly for uh, the storage capability. I think we have like two terabytes of storage just in our main company email alone. And that's because we do quite a lot of content. When you're producing a lot of video for your company, and dozens of others, you need the storage space. So we um, we do have the paid version of them, but you don't need that at home. You can absolutely use um, a free Gmail and set this up today, right now, um, and it'll work for you. So um, here you're gonna see the Google Calendar interface, and we use this to remind us about just about any, everything. I also write things down, um, in a notebook just to um, have the satisfaction of writing it and crossing it out. That's just something that I like doing. Um, I like handwriting stuff too, but the majority of what we do nowadays is um, inputted digitally and we, uh, we schedule tasks and work. We, we do this also for um, monthly recurring bills and, and things like that. Um, payment reminders that we could, you know, remind our clients about things like that, things that are coming up, um, meetings with new prospects or current clients, just really just about anything. Um, also, through Google Calendar, you can also add in um, certain holidays as well, um, even things like the faces of the moon, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think I have that checked just because it's pretty cool, but not really something that we need to use, but it just gives you so many possibilities. So um, if we go to create a new calendar, that's where we could create a new calendar system. You see there's kind of general things, but this is usually what, what I'm going to show you is usually my, my home, uh, if you will. So I'll go to event and then I will um, name the event usually something along the lines of um you know prospect name so let's just you know just call it name for now and then i do slash and then i do our company name and then i do if it's a first meeting i call it a discovery you always want to differentiate between an initial meeting a discovery meeting whatever you call it and a follow-up um, right so that way you and the prospect and your team all know where you're at at this stage? Is it an initial consultation? Is it a, a follow-up? Are you going over a, a contract? Are you connecting because um, you, you, know, you need access to an account and you're gonna screen share and go through it? Like, what is the purpose of the meeting? And um, a lot of people might say, well, you know, we'll just talk about it then or what have you. A lot can happen just in a, in a few days and sometimes meetings get scheduled a week or weeks in advance. You really wanna make it clear what the meeting is about and what your goals are because it's gonna be easier for you and them. So I would say discovery video meeting, we, we 
mostly do videos over phone calls as well. Um, Google Calendar, you can set it up however you want. You don't have to do just a phone call or video chat. We prefer doing video as a default if we can, just because it's nicer to connect with people when you can see them on screen. It's easier also with what we're doing in marketing to share things, kind of go back and forth that way. Um, so we prefer that re for that reason, but you can absolutely set it up um, however you want to. Then you add in the time. So let's say it's today from 4.30 to 5.00. Most of our meetings are about 30 to 45 minutes. It just kind of depends on what you're, we're talking about. If we're going over a contract or, you know, doing an onboarding um, process, it might be up to an hour, but it gives you the ability to make a meeting as long as you want. And some of them you can see can be quite long. That's because some people also will do like full webinars through um, systems like this, which is pretty cool. Um, so again, it just gives you a lot of diversity in what you can do. And there's only so much time for us to go over this in this video. So if you want more detail about Google Calendar and the things that you can do with the free or paid features from Google, let me know. Um, we've gotten a lot of positive comments over the years about our organizational skills and kind of the internal um, things that we do um, to set our own appointments. And a lot of our clients ask us for advice on that. Um, so I figured this would be a good video to do and, and really we have more than enough material to do a full series on this, on this subject, including things like outside of just purely scheduling time management. Time management is so important as a business owner. Time is the only thing that we can't get back. And uh, if you're running a business, your time is so valuable. You got to use it wisely, guys. All right. So if we're setting this up as like a discovery meeting, like this hypothetical version, we would do uh, not a repeated thing unless it's a recurring thing, but why would it if it's just a discovery? So we would say it does not repeat, but we could choose any one of these and have it repeat repeatedly uh, go again and again every single month. Like for example, um, my reminders about client payments, um, things like that, that'll get sent to my inbox every, every month. Um, or a reminder about bills and things and things like that. It's a recurring invite then. Um, so it kind of just depends on what the subject matter is. Or you can have it scheduled all, all day to ping you and remind you about it all day. You can add a location. There's a physical location. Now, since we do Google Meet video meetings, for the most part, we don't typically meet people. This is what we click there and boom, it makes a special link just for that. Now, when you're done with this meeting, let's say you like everything in it, and you want to use all that information, but you just want to change it to a follow-up. Instead of discovery, you want to call it a follow-up. Very common. Hopefully after that first meeting, you'll want to continue. You'll continue to negotiate, or maybe they'll you know, start working with you. So once this is set up, you can go and duplicate it and you just change the name and the date. Very simple, takes you know a couple seconds to do. And you can even use the same video link. A lot of our um, customers like that too because they'll, they'll save that in their, in their computers as well. And it's just, it's just easier to have the same link um, again and again, just a thought. Okay. And then here's where you add the description and everything like that. Um, I will typically put our contact information there. I'll put our website, um, our YouTube channel, because we have a lot of content and good feedback there. Anywhere that we have reviews, I put on there as well. And then I will put their contact information and my personal contact information. Sometimes I'll put something in the description that gives a little bit more detail about what it's about. Uh, but the title usually covers it, follow up discovery, what have you. Or if it's a coaching meeting, I'll say coaching meeting about XYZ, whatever it is that we're going over. Um, you can add as much as the description as you want. Obviously, the longer you make it, the less likely people are to read the whole thing. But, you know, it's also good to have uh, the essentials. I would definitely at least have their contact info and yours in there because it makes it a lot easier. Let's say somebody's late for a meeting. Um, you could just go there on that meeting invite, click a button, call them, and it, uh, it saves you a little bit of time that way as well. And you just like any kind of document, you can make it a tiered list, a bullet point list. You can insert links, anything like that, make certain things bold. Um, it's really nice and easy to use. And my recommendation would be to have some sort of template so that you can easily kind of copy and paste stuff in on your phone, on a, you know, a, a notepad or something like that. 
um, or set it up as some kind of a, a default uh, setting. Then you can also add attachments as well. Um, now these are cool because you can add them directly from Google Drive or you could attach it from your computer. And um, I like doing that because like, especially if, for example, we gave them a, a, a quote and we're following up about the quote. Well, I'm, I'm gonna send them an email with the quote and the breakdown and everything, of course, but I like having it attached here. Um, I do like redundancies when it comes to certain things because it eliminates confusion. And the more you can eliminate confusion from happening in the first place, the better off you are. When people are overthinking about something online, especially, they tend to just kind of tune it out and walk away. It's just kind of the world we live in here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. So anytime you can make it easier, attach those files that you're working on directly to the calendar invite, you'll be happy that you did. It's gonna save you some time having to resend emails and what have you. Not saying it won't ever happen, but it will more than likely save you time doing that. Then you wanna pick um, the color associated with the meeting, um, how many reminders that you would like as well. Let's say stay in meeting. Um, so what I typically do, I'll do like two or three reminders. I'll do like, a, you know, usually I'll do like the day before, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before and 30 minutes before something like that. I do two or three reminders. Um, now, and you guys don't necessarily have to do this. I will text my own reminder directly through my phone um, just so that A, they have my personal contact Right, so they know they can directly reach out if anything changes um, and as an extra backup. Now, I've never had a situation where the system didn't work, only if I forgot to input something and that was on me, you know, but it is nice, again, to have that little personal touch to reach out as you, hey, this is Katrina, the owner of COS Marketing Agency. I just wanted to give you my personal contact information. It's, it's a nice thing to do too. Not saying that you have to, because the beauty of this is it takes care of everything for you. You don't have to do that. And if you're the kind of person, you're not super technologically savvy, or you don't like dealing with that, um, this is probably all you need. I, again, I just do these extra things because I know there's a lot of companies out there who do what we do. So I, differentiation is very important. I like going that extra uh, mile and having those extra things in place just in case. All right. So, um, and if I'm sending that manual reminder, I could just go like this and copy the conference info and paste it into a text message. I don't have to really write a lot. And it's gonna give all the information with the, the name of the meeting and the video link. And that, that can be a reminder in and of itself, which is pretty cool. And um, let's open up more options here. So pretend like we have a description there. And then this is where you put um, the person who's associated with the meeting, just pick it out a random person there. You can also give them the ability to modify and add stuff to the event if they wanted to. I usually don't. I usually say, hey, they can invite people or, or see what's going on. Um, that way I know, you know, the information that I want in the description stays there. Um, okay, so let me get out of this. We're gonna go to discard. Another thing you wanna keep in mind, there's also, recurring schedules that you can make. Um, this part functions a little bit more like Calendly where it'll create a special link for you. And then you can send that to your prospects and um, they can sign up according to what's uh, available in your weekly recurring schedule um, link. And you can make any amount of versions of this. You can make some for discovery meetings, for follow-up meetings, anything that you want. Um, you can have them schedule weeks or months in advance. Um, you can put in buffer times between meetings, that way you're not doing them back to back. Um, right now, for the most part, we do it manually, intentionally, um, just so that we have kind of more control over that and our schedule can sometimes change frequently. Um, but this is good, like if you have a regular schedule where you know you can only do calls in this certain time frame, you just send them the link and um, it's a pretty easy process, very similar to what I showed you before with the events. The main difference being is that, again, it's on a consistent schedule, X amount of days per week between this time and this time. Um, and then you incorporate the 
buffer times it's in there instead of telling yourself manually like okay i'm going to give myself this buffer time i won't schedule anything for 20 minutes a half an hour or whatever the case all right so there's that and then you can also create tasks now so this is interesting a lot of my tasks are under the event category because events are good when you're doing recurring things that are kind of more in your face like a like a more loud reminder if you will um but the task section is really meant for those kinds of things too like uh i'm just making up stuff like electric bill you know like like or pay pay electric bill that's a monthly recurring thing that's going to be a, a task set in stone thing you know you always got to pay that so we're going to say repeat um maybe we're going to say custom and then we'll say once a month on the 31st let's pretend like our electric bill is on the 31st it's not i think it's like on the 15th or something and then you put in you know pay electric bill online you know it does not matter what it is and then you hit save and then we'll go on your calendar every single um day every single month on the 31st or the 30th right um and then the time every single month and then when you're done with it you hit that um when you're done with the task you you save that it's done and then it'll put a line through it and it won't show up again until that following month or however long you want um the thing to recur so there's that um and there are some other features we could go over like in the settings menu we could talk about other things related uh to google that we work with that help us a lot like one thing that comes to mind um would be the google um documents and the google spreadsheets that's something we use every day that comes uh free with google so yeah a lot of good stuff um coming down the pipeline from Google built-in stuff that works really well. They're coming out with AI. There's just so many different things um, happening. So, I and I'd like to do a series on time management. I think it's so important in general for people, um, and, but especially business owners, because it is very hard when you're your own boss, you don't have people telling you what to do or how to do it. it, it, it both empowering can be a little scary if you don't know how to balance your time properly and, and, and I've been there, done that, and I've, I've had my business for a while and I'm happy to relay information that might help you guys if you are interested in it. Um, if you are seeing this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe to this video. If you don't, I have no way of knowing if this content resonated with you. So comment below, let me know uh, what you wanna see next. And when you hit that subscribe button, please hit the notification bell so that you can get notifications about the things that we post when it drops. All right. Thank you guys so much. See you in the next one. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.